Welcome to another Dave Day on SSP TV News with Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman. Now previously on SSP TV News yesterday I was doing the scoreboard, talked about the Hazleton area girls softball team, their win over Crestwood. I mentioned one stat Dave you had in your article and I previewed, I said I wanted to talk about another one when you came in that we can discuss and it was the fact that their offense, they had three strikeouts in two games against some very big competition with Tunkhannock and Emmaus and they, Dave the offense is rolling. They seem, I don't want to say they surprised themselves but when you interviewed their pitch your Erica book, um, she really hit on and was like, you know, a little worried coming into the season maybe about how they were going to do after losing so much talent. Um, no problem so far. Uh, no, not the way that they can hit. I mean, up and down the lineup, that's what Erica was talking about after the game against Crestwood. Um, you know, you, you put the top of the lineup, you're going to have the veteran experience of, you know, uh, a Taylor Kashak or Rebecca Rossi. And then you got the new uh, people that were new players last year, Tiana Trion and Marissa Tribal Peace. They move up in the lineup. Kira Antolik, Erica, you know, she hit well in, that, in the sixth and seventh spot last year. She's moved up in the order. Now you got the younger players, the Caitlin Peters coming into the fold and Olivia Wolk, uh, Aliyah Cost. It's just a well-balanced lineup, and uh, like uh, like Erica said, they can all crush the ball. And uh, you know, when you're a pitcher, that, that that's a very comforting fact. She's been pitching well, Dave. How's the defense looking? I don't know if you got to see it. I mean, it was a 15 nothing shutout. It was, the game was shortened, but um, they had a very good defense last year when they made a state run. Yeah, that, I mean, it, it's experienced people. People have played in, in their positions now for a few years. Uh, you, you have a core of like Rebecca Rossi in center field. You have Marissa Travel Piece at uh, you know a key position in shortstop. Taylor Cashex played uh, second base for a few years now. Tiana Trion's back at third base. So that, that's an experienced core. Uh, breaking a new catcher, Hope Kinney was a rock for how many years behind the plate. Uh, Olivia Wolk and other people like Julia Mooney, they're, they're, they're replacing her. But uh, again, the Lady Cougars haven't skipped a beat and uh, the way they can mash the ball too. Uh, the defense has to be very good. If, it's, if they get pitching in defense, uh, look out, the sky's the limit. Dave, I wanted to ask you before we go to some national news. I had the joy of speaking with Dr. Joy Gallagher recently. I'm a great athlete in our area. I actually read back to when she was inducted into the Hazleton Area Sports Hall of Fame and the standard speaker to read some of her resume. I was in high school. She graduated a year before me. I was an intern here when I used to cover her. But as I'm going back and reading all that she had to, all that she accomplished, it was pretty amazing what she was able to do. And now she is a scientist. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I remember covering her from her Little League days. She was playing with the guys. She was like a standout on the Valley West Little League All-Star team. Uh, you know, she played center field too. She, she, she was an absolute stud athlete all the way back from then. But uh, one of the nicest people I've ever met in covering sports, really, really, you know, respectful to, you know, her elders and, and, and the games that she played too. And I have to say about Joy Gallagher, you know, for how great she was as a high school athlete at Hazleton area, she played two sports at college, at a Division one college in Wagner. So, I mean, if that says a lot about her uh, abilities as an athlete. Anyone else in college right now, Dave, that's been impressing you from our radio? I've been reading in the Standard Speaker. It's been, you know, kind of slow at spring sports as we're waiting for the weather to break. But there's been some college standouts that you guys have been reporting on. Yeah, Dante Biazzi's definitely stepped up. Uh, you know, you have a, a, a Gianna Plasca who has a lot of relatives in the Freeland area who uh, did exceptionally well this year in gymnastics at Central Michigan. Uh, she had an outstanding uh, a junior year this year for the Chippewas. Did I read Bobby Planudis was in the top 10 in Division One basketball for three-pointers? Yeah, I was going to get to Bobby Planudis, <laughs> too. I mean, I, I don't know, something in that block of Ridgewood up, you know, where I live there, between the Planudises and the Biazzis. Yeah, Bobby was eighth in uh, three-point percentage as a, you know, as a freshman this year at uh, Mount St. Mary's. Uh, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's a fabulous season, you know, to, to break into the college game. Mackenzie Uri doing great job, great things. We talk about two sport athletes. I mean, she's playing, she played both basketball and uh, softball now for Kings and excelling at both. So uh, we, we got a lot of talent in this area and uh, it's just coming to the fore right now. And it's a big time right now for Philadelphia sports fans, Dave. I mean, you have the Eagles, you have the Flyers now going to the playoffs. They're going to play the Penguins. So a lot of people in our area have to be excited about this first round matchup. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're a hockey fan, it doesn't get any better than that. And I, I, I can admit I don't watch much hockey during the regular season. But once playoffs come around, I'll watch a little bit. So there's a little bit more interest. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still not a big hockey fan. A lot of people in this area are, uh, you know, with the Penguins having their yeah. farm team here. Even, you know, uh, the Flyers having their farm team, you know, nearby Allentown. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's a natural rivalry and the, uh, the Pens and the Flyers have played a lot in the playoffs over the years, each team getting uh, the upper hand in, in different years and uh, it'll be a war. I mean, the, the Penguins are, are the defending champs and the Flyers, you know, are a young team, but they have some veterans there who have been through the wars before and uh, they'd like nothing more to knock off the Penguins. And the 76ers, Dave, going on a streak and then, you know, as we're getting closer and closer to playoffs, is it maybe realistic this could be their year? Uh, I, I don't know if they're, <laughs> they're quite there yet, but they're, you know, they're going to make their presence felt. They already have have this year and 
uh, uh, whatever happens from here on out, the 76ers have enjoyed you know, a fabulous season. If you're a fan of the Philly, I mean, I'm sure you were frustrated through the years too when you started hearing about the process and how long it's taken. But uh, you know, the people that have been that have stuck with the uh, 76ers through the years and uh, their patience is being rewarded because they've played some dynamite basketball, some young, young, young and up and coming stars. Uh, you know, and, and the game's going to hinge on a lot of those players. And, uh, you know, rumors that maybe LeBron James wants to play with the 76ers put him in that mix. But uh, right now, that, that, that's, that's for here and now. That's for later on. Uh, right now, the playoffs, the 76ers will be happy to get maybe through one round. If they can get through two, I think anything now is gravy. I still think it could be an exciting summer for the Phillies. I know it was kind of a rough start, but I think they can have a, a decent summer as well. Um, follow Dave's work in the Standard Speaker along with Steve Stallone doing a great job of covering all your local teams.